up guys? This episode, we're gonna take and convert the Ajax form for submitting a new message in a chat room, and we're gonna convert that to using Action Cable. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because we've already got this open connection, and it has to be open, otherwise their chat's kind of useless. So we might as well take advantage of that and send our messages across through Action Cable instead of an Ajax request. So we're gonna refactor what we built and convert it to using Action Cable. The first thing we wanna do is actually look at the form itself. So I pulled that up here in the chat room slash show.html.erb and we have our messages container and our form just underneath that. And we were currently submitting this as remote as true, which will send it over with jQuery UJS as an Ajax request. Now, this is fine, but we want to remove that because we want to intercept this form submission with our own code in order to go use the uh, chat room's action cable channel. So we're going to write our own JavaScript, and instead of jQuery UJS doing it, we're going to do the intercept, and that will be that. So this is pretty straightforward. We're going to need to pull out the chat room ID, and we're also going to need to pull out the message text the, from the body field here. So we'll need to write some JavaScript to pull that off. So we've already written a little function here that says anytime you type the enter key in that message box, we're going to not do a new line and we're going to submit that to the server. So this really says, well, if the character code or the key code is number 13, which is the enter key, we're going to not insert a new line. So that was the default. So we're going to prevent the default. And then we're going to uh, submit that form. Now, we can actually say, let's look for the new message form. And on submit, we will handle it instead of jQuery UJS. So we'll want to do the same thing here. We will want to prevent default because we don't want it to submit a regular old post request. And here, let's just console.log submitted form to see if we got that working. So let's refresh this page and let's type hello random in here. And if I hit enter like I just did, nothing happens. And that is a good sign because then you should see the submitted form in the console. And that means that our JavaScript here in it not only listened to that enter key in the first function, it submitted the form with this.submit, and then immediately after that, this uh, function to listen to the submit uh, grabbed it and then canceled the submission. So this is where we're gonna need to grab both the chat room ID and the message text for that, um, that text field. So first, we can really just grab the chat room ID, and this is pretty straightforward. It actually is on this messages container, and so we have the uh, data behavior messages class um, or attribute. And then on that tag, we can grab the chat room ID. So we'll just take that one place that we will always know that it will be there because the rest of our JavaScript will use that. So we'll always just make sure that we grab it from there. And so we'll have data behavior equals messages. And then here we can say, let's just grab the chat room ID off of that. And then we want to grab the field for the message body. So we want, to, we want to grab this. So if we inspect that, it actually has an ID of message body. And that is because the form um, helpers in Rails put that ID on there. So we can really just grab that field. Um, and so we could have body equals ID of message body. And then here we can grab that value from it and submit it over with our um, app channel with action cable. And so let's do that. Let's, let's grab that. Uh, we got those two items and we can go into the other channels chatroom.coffee. So this is actually the one that defines the action cable subscription to the server side. And here you can just add any, any new methods that you would like. So we can say send message and we can pass in that chat room ID and the message itself into a function. 
And app chat rooms or any of these action cable subscriptions on the client side are gonna have this at perform method. And if you call this, it's going to call the action cable perform method that comes with the action cable JavaScript. So you won't actually really see that, but behind the scenes, this sends it over the WebSocket connection. And so you can take this and call any method you want on the server side and pass in your uh, hash of parameters or options that you would like. So we can just say chat room ID is chat room ID and message equals message. And so we'll send over this object, this JSON object, and the server side will receive that. And so if you go into your app channels, chat rooms channel, you can define the exact same method that you just called. So send message here will match up to, let's split this so you can see both of these. Uh, so this at perform is calling send message, which will be converted to this send message here. And we will have some data that we receive, which will be this uh, object here. And we will be able to receive that. And let's just say rails.logger.info data. And so we will have this set up so that we can perform that message, that send message function server side, and we can just pass that data over and Action Cable is gonna know what to do. It will convert it to the Ruby function. It will call that function. It will execute that server side and do whatever you want. So that means all we have to do then is to go back to our uh, original chatrooms.coffee here, not the channel. And all we need to do is say, let's grab this at dot, app dot chat rooms. Oops, let's just type it out, chat rooms. And you just call that method that you created. So you would say send message, chat room ID, which is this variable. And then you pass in the body dot value. So we're gonna take, this is the field itself and we're gonna grab the value out of the field, so the actual text that you typed, and we'll send that over as the message argument, which will get sent over again to the server-side channel, and will be received as one object, because we have this in a JSON object. So this makes it all into one thing, and then we have data on the server, which is that one thing, and it's just a hash, and we can pull that apart and display it. So let's save all of this, refresh our page here, and then let's type test random and hit enter. And this should submit, and we should be able to look at our uh, logs here. And you'll see that user two received this message, which was the info that we did, the Rails logger.info. So you can see that user two send or called the send message function and passed over this JSON hash that got converted into a Ruby hash or JSON object. So this got converted over to a Ruby hash and you have full access to all of that stuff just from the Ruby side of things, just like you did on the client side. So it's cool, it actually just transmits this data and says, well, from the JavaScript, you can call any functions that you want server side and you're good to go as long as they're defined in chat rooms channel. So as long as you access the right um, action cable subscription in your JavaScript, you can always call those methods server side um, from your JavaScript. So that's pretty neat. This is not very hard. And then the last thing that we want to do is say uh, body.value equals empty string. And that will go and clear out that string which when we hit enter here, it didn't do anything. And if we do it now, we can say test random and we hit enter, it sends it over to the server, it logs it on the server and then it clears this out. Um, and so that is all working. Now the only thing we need to do next is to take that and instead of logging that message server side, like we did here, we can actually just take this and transmit or broadcast that to all of the recipients for this channel, for that chat room. So we have the ID, so we know the ID, and we're um, basically able to do the exact same publish as we did 
with the uh, the Ajax action. And now the question is, how do we actually go save that message and then send it out and broadcast it again? Well, conveniently, we already did that. So we can go into that messages controller that we created before, and we can basically duplicate all the work that this does and put it in that function in the uh, chat rooms channel. So this is pretty cool. So basically, we can set that chat room just as we did before, and we can say find, but instead of using Pram's chat room ID, we can say data chat room ID, because we passed over the chat room in the function, um, the perform function that we did before. So that works, that works nicely, and then we can create that same message just like before and say at chat room dot messages. And this time I'm gonna do create because we're not using strong params here. We can do the assignment of the body and the user in the exact same line. So we can do all of that together and we can say body is data body. And or we called it message, didn't we? So we in our JavaScript for chatrooms.coffee. We can double check this and make sure we have the right one. So we call that message there. Um, we can actually just change this. It's probably better to call it body because then it will match up um, if you were doing something like comparing it to your controller. You can see that this is actually the pr um, this is actually the value that we want to or the attribute we want to set. And so here we can also just finish up and say current user that will create the message. And then once that success it, successful, we can do the same message relay job dot perform later on the message. And so this is going to effectively do the same thing that entire controller action did, but we'll be able to do that over the WebSocket connection instead. So we don't really even need this controller anymore because we're not gonna be submitting this over Ajax. This won't ever really be that useful. And you could probably go and delete this controller if you wanted. Um, so that is going to work. And we should be able to, let's restart our Rails server. And sometimes when you're changing those channels, you'll need to restart your Rails server because once it's already loaded, um, and the connections are live and all of that, you can't actually change it and get live updates like you can with a new request. So let's test this out and say, let's refresh our browser, get the latest JavaScript, and let's test random. Hit enter, and voila, we've sent that now over the WebSocket connection. It has landed in the channel, it processes it, saves it in the database, then it sends it over to the same relay job, which goes to your background workers, which then talks to your action cable Redis connection again, which sends it out to everybody, and then everybody receives it and displays it in the browser. So now we're doing quite a bit of stuff with action cable. We're receiving messages, we're sending messages, we have the ability to add new features in. So like if I receive a message, I can send a little notice to the server and say, I've read up to this time, and we can keep track of unread times and all that stuff, which we're gonna do in a future episode. But I do wanna point out that now that we've done this, Action Cable is 100% critical to be running in our application. The way we had it before, where the form submitted with Ajax, if Action Cable is down, yeah, we don't receive new messages, but we can still send them and they will still work as long as the Rails app is up. But now that that sending goes over the WebSockets as well, the Rails app could be functional, but if Action Cable isn't, our app doesn't do anything, and it isn't able to save any messages, and that's a problem. So you have to kind of keep in mind what you want to use your WebSockets for, and determine whether or not it's crucial for it to be up as much as possible. Of course, in a, in a chat room application, you're gonna focus more on this connection being up as much as possible. But if it's sort of a side project or something where you're doing notifications, like you might consider making the requests uh, over Ajax for sending data and just using it for receiving notifications. GitHub's a good example of this where the GitHub issues will update in real time using WebSockets, but 
uh, if it were to go down, you wouldn't really lose out on that much of a user experience at the end of the day. You just kind of lose out that someone commented, but you can still comment and you can still use it, even if they're struggling keeping their WebSocket servers up for whatever reason. Like maybe they blow up in traffic one day and they are able to keep the webs website up, but not the WebSockets. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's now a new dependency that you're 100% relying on, and that should affect the way that you go build your application, just to keep that in mind so that you don't build something that really, when it goes down, it goes down hard. So that's kind of just something to keep in mind so that you can build a lot more sturdy applications just in case something bad happens. So that's it for this episode. We will be diving in most likely in the next one to um, have the ability to mark as unread so that we can see when the most recent messages um, were displayed. So that should be fun, but we will save that to the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you in the next one.